Hello, everybody. Ray Pedras on the McAllen Cable Network. Joined today by Texas Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa, our state senator for District 20. Senator, thank you for joining us. Well, here. thank you for being here. We're here to tell everybody about a, an important election that's coming up in November, and we want to explain to everybody uh, what it's all about. It has to do with the Water Development Board and uh, a bond election funds that uh, communities uh, can apply for, right? Uh, that's correct. Everybody knows that uh, our state is uh, growing at a very rapid pace. Uh, our water needs continue to grow. Uh, and we have a water plan in place. Uh, unfortunately, we could not uh, fund the water plan this last session, uh, where we tried it and proposed a small fee on water taps uh, of about $3 uh, to fund the water plan, where we need about $30 billion uh, for the whole state. Uh, but we also have another program uh, where the Water Development Board funds different projects the communities need. For example, uh, drainage, uh, water plants, uh, new sewer water plants. Uh, we also take care of uh, infrastructure needs, uh, replacement of uh, pipes. And how do we do that? By allowing cities, counties, uh, and water supply corporations to apply for loans uh, with the Water Development Board at a very low interest rate. And, uh, and these loans uh, are created in such a way to fit the uh, financial uh, ability of the governmental entity. Uh, and this is at no cost to the taxpayers. Uh, and uh, the way it works is that this, uh, come November 8th, uh, on the ballot will be a constitutional amendment, uh, number two, uh, where we're asking the voters to authorize the issuance of $6 billion uh, of revenue bonds uh, for the state of Texas. Uh, this uh, will not cost taxpayers any money. Uh, those are self-sustaining bonds, uh, where when we make a loan to a governmental entity, uh, the governmental entity pays back the loan with a very low interest rate of about 3.54 percent. Wow. So if I'm a taxpayer and I'm listening to this uh, and I'm thinking, is this going to raise my taxes in any way? Is it going to impact my wallet in any way? How would you, what, you would say no? This would not raise taxes. Uh, it would not cost any money to the taxpayers. Uh, it's a system that we've set up that has worked very well in the past. Uh, the Water Development Board, the issues this water bonds, uh, has a triple A uh, credit rating, uh, so they get very low interest uh, and makes it affordable to a lot of local cities, uh, counties, and water supply corporations that otherwise uh, they could not afford. Uh, and uh, and what's real interesting is that it's called evergreen. Uh, by that it means that the bonds uh, will work like a revolving loan account that's available uh, to any community in the state of Texas uh, that needs assistance or financing uh, with their water infrastructure needs. And, and how do the communities apply for these uh, loans or grants? There's a process, a water development board, uh, where they make an application uh, and they identify the project, uh, their needs, and the amount of money they'll need. Uh, and the water development board will work with the different communities uh, and analyze their needs uh, and the type of financing that they can uh, afford and handle on a long-term basis. Uh, so, and it's a, it's a process uh, where, quite frankly, here in the Valley, for example, uh, we, uh, so, and let me, let me step back a little bit. Some are loans and some are grants. Uh, it all depends on the project. Uh, but these uh, same monies are combined with federal monies uh, that are available for water projects. So it enhances the amount of money available for water projects. Uh, and for example, here in the Valley, uh, City of McAllen uh, received $3 million to help with the moving the buoy reservoir. Uh, the La Jolla Water Supply Corporation, now called AWA, uh, received millions to extend the water lines. Uh, Donna is applying, for example, uh, to get a new uh, water plant. Uh, here in District 20, that runs all the way to Corpus Christi, we have received over $300 million in the last 10 years for financing of different water projects and to improve the infrastructure uh, for us uh, here in South Texas. So would you say it's somewhat critical for, uh, for voters to, to, to pass this? Because uh, essentially if uh, the funds dry out, then uh, the taxpayers would probably have to foot the bill on future projects, water projects? If the voters do not approve um, the constitutional amendment number two, uh, that means that the money will dry up for funding of these different programs that are very much needed. Uh, and that means that then the local communities on their own 
would have to find the financing uh, and probably have to raise property uh, taxes or other type of taxes or even water fees uh, to be able to finance projects that are needed. Water is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Uh, so we have to find ways to fund these water projects. Uh, and if this uh, amendment doesn't pass, uh, then the local communities will be saddled with higher costs. Uh, uh, and, and some will not be unable to find the financing necessary for the water projects that, that are very much needed. You know what, we should let people know in South Texas that we're very fortunate uh, to have you on that board. Uh, could you talk a little bit about your role on that board and how many members are on that board? Well, you know, I'm uh, on the Natural Resources Committee, uh, and it's really amazing. Uh, we're uh, 11 members, uh, and uh, we hear all type of testimony uh, from all over the state of Texas concerning our water needs, uh, in addition to other type of needs and, and issues that we deal with. Uh, and I have learned more about water than uh, I thought I would ever know. You could write a book. Uh, I could write a book. Uh, and for us here in Texas, uh, we grew by over five million people during the last 10 years. Wow. Uh, and the water needs that we have continue to grow. Uh, there's a great demand uh, on our water supplies. So we have to focus in terms of uh, water conservation, in terms of building up our infrastructure, uh, and, and, and we're trying to find ways to do that. The board itself, the Water Development Board itself, uh, has a uh, board members who are appointed by the governor, uh, but they have a great staff. Uh, they will go out of their way uh, to help a community uh, put together a, uh, an application. Uh, and will provide technical assistance to them. Uh, so it, it is really a process that is, that is not complicated. It takes time, uh, but you need to provide a lot of support to show that you uh, are putting together a viable project uh, and that it's needed. And for us here in the Valley, uh, due to our growth, uh, we need uh, this type of financing uh, that is affordable uh, to our communities here. All right, and, and I'm sure uh, uh, once people have heard that uh, this uh, constitutional amendment uh, passed, your, that your bill passed, and that uh, you know now voters decide on a bond election, have people started maybe uh, lining up or, or maybe calling you uh, to see where they could uh, get some assistance? Well, I used to get a lot of calls from uh, different uh, communities uh, throughout uh, South Texas asking for help, uh, and I usually uh, help them out and connect them, connect them with the Texas Water Development Board so they can start the process. Uh, and when they need technical help, uh, the Water Development Board goes out of its way to provide the expertise they need uh, to put an application uh, together. Uh, and what's really interesting is that the Water Development Board has a history. Uh, uh, of all the loans they have made, uh, there has not been a single default. Uh, on the contrary, they have made about $9 million uh, in revenue uh, for the state, for the taxpayers. So they have a very, very um, uh, excellent record uh, in terms of um, assessing the needs and assessing the financial needs uh, and set up a, 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 a repayment uh, plan uh, where it doesn't tax the local community. It doesn't cost the taxpayers any money. And keep in mind that, that when you call um, evergreen uh, bonds, uh, which means that they will continue to revolve, uh, these bonds that do, does not cost uh, any money from a general revenue to service the debt. The debt itself uh, is uh, serviced and paid by the community uh, that gets the money. Um, but the service debt uh, is uh, somewhere around 3%, 3.5, on the average about 3.7%, uh, which is excellent. Uh, interest rate, uh, and, and that is uh, because the Water Development Board uh, has a triple A plus rating uh, in the bond market, so uh, it, it's a way that uh, we try to lower the cost uh, to the local communities that need this type of help. Yeah, savings for the communities. Uh, is there anything that we're leaving out that you think voters need to know about this bond election? Well, this is a part of the overall strategy in terms of making sure that we have the money necessary to not only finance, uh, uh, not only to finance 
the infrastructural needs for, for our, our water, uh, but also uh, we need to educate the public in terms of a long-term water plan that we have in place. Uh, we have now formed regional water groups uh, where your different water conservation districts and water supply corporations uh, are part of that regional water supply uh, planning group uh, so that we know and measure how much water we have. So we can at least predict into the future how much more water we will need uh, and come up with plans uh, to either build more reservoirs uh, and, and provide for better conservation just to give an example, uh, here in the valley, we lose a lot of water because we have open canals for irrigation. A lot of that water evaporates uh, into, the, in, into the air, uh, where if we had uh, pipes, water pipes, uh, that we invested in the infrastructure water pipes, uh, they would certainly conserve a lot more water, uh, make more water available <clears throat> for continuing growth. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because uh, last session uh, we tried to pass uh, legislation that would increase a, or impose a fee, a water tap fee, uh, on each water tap that we have in the state of Texas, about $3 a year. Uh, and it got out of committee, uh, but in the Texas House where all uh, taxes or fees have to originate, uh, and they were brought up, brought up for a vote. Uh, at some point, <clears throat> we need to move forward uh, and understand that a very small investment, uh, $3 uh, a year per water tap, is a great investment uh, for the future needs uh, of our state and a continuing growth. And we're, so, we're so reliant on, 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 the, on the river water here too in South Texas and our population continues to grow. There's this growing concern that uh, one of these days that water is going to run out. Well, and, and uh, the public is very much aware of that uh, from, from past history in that every uh, time that we issued uh, and requested a voter support for a constitutional amendment to issue water bonds, uh, they have never said no. Uh, so they understand how precious water is and how much uh, it's needed for survival. Very good. So we want to remind them again, uh, November 8th, it's uh, number two uh, on the ballot, and all they have to do is check yes, right, for the... That's it. Uh, so please uh, vote. Exercise your right to vote. This is a very important issue uh, for us, not only here in South Texas, uh, but the future water needs of our state. And, and I think a lot of, a lot of times people uh, say, oh, well, you know, that doesn't really affect me. Well, it, it does affect all of us, actually. So it's important that we all go out there and, 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 uh, and vote. Well, a perfect example of what's happening right now, our state is going through a very severe drought. Uh, and in a lot of small West Texas towns, they go up to turn the faucet on, and it's empty. Uh, and we take that for granted, that when we turn the faucet on, boom, we get water. Uh, well, to continue that, we need to invest uh, in our water needs. There's a, I grew up in Central Texas, and there's a, there's a lake, uh, Lake Somerville, right now, is uh, drying up. It's uh, the lowest it's ever been. So I think uh, you're, you're right when you say, man, the, the, the whole state is really being affected by this drought. Well, here in, uh, in the valley, you know, we have, uh, of course, the river and the river, but we also have water reservoirs uh, that are being tapped to pump water. Uh, and now we're getting to the point uh, that a lot of uh, water is being reused uh, through a process, uh, for example, sewer water uh, that is used for toilets and, 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 and uh, taking showers. Uh, there's now a process where all that is being cleaned and treated uh, to be reused, maybe for, uh, not for drinking, but for other purposes, uh, will not do any damage to the environment, uh, just because of the shortage of water. But to provide for those plants in that process, uh, we need to invest the money necessary uh, to, to build them. All right, very good. And construct them. <laughs> All right, Senator Hinojosa, uh, thanks to you for your time, and uh, thanks for explaining to everybody about uh, how this all works and uh, why it's so important for them to, to, to go out and vote. Well, uh, not only water, but for drainage uh, and to avoid flooding. Uh, so the, the, the merit uses, uh, the money uh, provided by this bond, water bonds, the Constitution will be used for, for very, very many purposes, but all focused uh, on our water needs. All right, very good. Senator Nujosa, thank you so much. Well, thank Appreciate you. it. All right. We, of course, thank you for watching. I'm Ray Pedras, and this is the McAllen Cable Network.